What I'd like to do now is I'm going to show you a very short clip, and I'm going to tell you in advance, because it, it, it's, it's funny, and it's actually okay to laugh. This is not a class about political correctness, so if you find it funny, it'll be okay to laugh, okay? Derwin, can you hit the clip, please? Welcome to GNN, the global news network. Tell us about the new head honcho. Linda Jackson is a winner. Linda Jackson, how are you, my friend? This is Linda. Oh, black. <laughs> black. Bronze. Black. Now, here's what I want to tell you about that clip. I was in a movie theater in Boston when I first saw that. And we won't talk about whatever movie I was seeing that made them show that to the audience, but whatever it was. Um, and it happened to be a fairly racially diverse audience, which doesn't always happen in a movie theater in Boston, but it was. And everybody howled with laughter. And this was a complete revelation to me. And let me just tell you why. So I have lived in the US uh, my sort of formative years, but I did my best not to live in the US after that. Um, so I've lived in the UK, in Spain, in France. And one of the things I noticed, and Frank referenced my career at BP, is I always felt that in America, when I walked into a room, and by room, I, you know, it could be this room, but I mean like boardrooms, you know, executive meeting rooms, that the first thing that people saw that reacted to was black, was the, the race piece, right? But I noticed in the UK that the first thing people react to is gender. Now, for some reason, maybe they could suss out, since there are people here who can see humble and sensitive and all that, that I wasn't British. So I was already outside of the British boxes. But gender's a big deal. There are fewer women in leadership, fewer women executives. A lot of those women executives actually are American and living in the UK. Um, so it, the gender piece in leadership was really kind of what tended to cause the reaction. And, it, and I, I mean, I know this to be true. And it really struck me, these two different but I didn't, this was just in my head. I didn't have confirmation of this theory other than conversations over time anecdotally, right? And so when this entire theater burst into laughter, I'm like, wow, like all the white people are laughing and all the black people are laughing. And that could only be because everybody knew it was true, right? That this was, they recognized this phenomenon, right? And of course, Will Ferrell is shown saying it, but it's also kind of what's going on in his like mind, right? It's like a, a sort of, you know, black, black, black. And I, I just, I was astonished by that. And so it, you know, it, it caused me to reflect further on this question of identity and, and you know, really these superficial things that people see and the assumptions that people make about all of us and what, you know, what further assumptions, and I'm not talking about humble and sensitive, those are good things to infer that you see in someone's eyes, but um, the superficial and what that causes us to think about people, right? And what, what goes beyond that. So I'm gonna give you just a couple of examples from former students of mine. So a wonderful um, student from India, and he talked about, he'd grown up, his, his education was in, primarily in the UK, but he grew up in India and that's where his family was. And he said that in London, he was called and treated as a Paki which is a very derogatory term for anybody from the Southeast Asia, right? Um, and in his homeland of India, he's actually quite highborn, very upper class, and that's just known through a variety of means, but, you know, visibly. And he said at the Kennedy School, he was just that guy with the very cool accent. Um, uh, and he, you know, it was very reflective, though. Literally, as he went from place to place, he was treated differently based on nothing he said or did, just sort of these appearances, right? Um, another wonderful student, Lebanese heritage, family sort of ancestry, but actually a New Zealander. And he had gone to the Pasha schools in New Zealand and had the most amazing accent. It was just, you know, just sort of like want to listen to him talk. And he talked about one time coming into, I think he was coming to the U.S., and he was pulled out of line, sort of racial profiling, because he has dark eyes, dark hair, very much looks Arab in, in uh, origin. And they asked him a couple of questions right there, pulling him out of the line. And as soon as he said by sentence three, they were like, I'm so sorry, sir, and put him back in line. <laughs> Just like that, right? So again, these questions are like identity, what people think, what they see. Um, another wonderful student, uh, an African student who identifies as lesbian. Um, and she grew up being chased out of the women's bathroom um, because people didn't think she belonged there, thought she, she was actually arrested. And so for her, that whole thing is something that is really traumatizing for her to this day. Um, Israeli student who shared with me um, that here at the Kennedy School, people have such strong reactions to Israel. 
And of course, when we say strong reactions to Israel, many people haven't been there. We're not actually talking about the country. We're talking about foreign and domestic policy, right? And that he would look at people's eyes when he said where he was from to see whether he got the look of hatred or not. And, and determine how he would you know, interact with them after that. And he, I mean, literally, and we talked a lot about this. And then another student, um, one of my favorite students, not, you're all my favorites, and the ones who are, there are a few former students in there, so I have to be very careful about that. But <laughs> he was one of my favorite students ever. Um, so he was a US military guy, he was a Navy commander, and he was just the most amazing student. And he talked about serving as a commander in the, um, prior, in the don't ask, don't tell era, and then after that, and duty of care, and how people behaved, and how he, his role was to make sure his troops were okay, and to sort of, you know, what he could ask and what he couldn't, because his job was to go around and ask about their family lives, find out how they were doing, and just how he navigated that. And at the very end of the class, um, he came up to me and he said, you know, he loved it, and it was one of his favorite classes, and he said, um, you probably don't know this about me, because he was just like the star pupil. He said, but I'm probably one of the most conservative people you've had in one of your classes. And I'm like, you know, okay. And he said, you know, I'm uh, married young, I've got four kids, white guy, military, Mormon, and, you know, and he, so again, this is sort of assumption, and he got it all, and it was really like there, and I would say teaching other people. So again, he, he had experienced here, he talked about as a US military officer here at the Kennedy School, also being, having foisted on him sort of all of the US foreign and domestic policy, and that he learned to change his vocabulary from saying, when we invaded Iraq, for example, and even talking to Americans, he had to change that to say when America invaded Iraq, because people would stop and say, we didn't do that, we didn't, you know, it's, it is the US military, but, um, and talked about feeling as a minority, for the first time here at the Kennedy School, because obviously the military, they're used to being around other people who serve in the military. So it's just interesting how people react to other people's reactions. Now, how many of you know what Tinder is? You can admit it, come on. <laughs> I didn't ask if you used it, I just asked if you knew what it was. In a meeting with my teaching team, I started talking about Tinder and one of the younger members said, how do you know about Tinder? <laughs> one of the other ones said, oh, she's cool. And then I explained that I have children your age, and that's why I know about Tinder, but in any event. Um, here's one of the interesting things about Tinder. So Tinder, which has taken off worldwide, and for those of you who don't know, it's one of these online dating sites. But a lot of them, and I'll use some of the names of the ones that started in America, uh, eHarmony, OkCupid, Match.com, those are all dating sites that purport to have proprietary, very long, complicated algorithms you fill out these questionnaires to help you, help match you with people that are compatible, right? Tinder does not bother with any of that. Eventually we'll see that logo again, so any of you who are not familiar with Tinder are unwilling to admit it. Um, you have a screen, you have a photograph of a person, and you simply swipe left or right, nope, or like, there you go. That's Tinder, and that's Ryan Gosling, we thought we'd have somebody not, not from the class. Um, so, people spend hours just swiping back and forth, right? But here's the interesting thing. So social scientists do not accept the theory of the algorithms of the other sites with the questionnaires and the whole thing. Say there's nothing to it. And of course the, the sites defend that there is. Tinder, now they've done some research. There's a researcher, Jessica Carbino at UCLA. And what they found is, you would think that this is, since it's just sort of swiping back and forth and looking at, at and everybody jokes about Tinder and the whole thing, is that it's all about appearance and physicality. But actually, what they've found is we are capable of decoding literally thousands of messages in that image. So it's actually not funny that people were saying they could see it sensitive and tender and humble because people decode thousands of messages. So that's a close-up portrait, but you know, it's the setting where the person is. It's the facial expression, what they're wearing, just all and, and, and many, many more things. And what people are looking for actually is social compatibility as much at least as any physical sort of piece of it. And that's the decoding, because you don't need to decode a message to see whether you think someone's attractive or not. The other thing about it, when you think of it as just this online community of faces, that you'd think that there would be kind of the in crowd of the pretty people who get all the likes. And that is not at all what happens with Tinder, and this is what the research has shown. Now, of course, everybody's idea of attractive is different. But in fact, it's completely spread out. And then they did some research with women and showed them Handsome, you know, just scientists have ways of determining who's handsome generically, objectively. Um, men with, you know, the chiseled jaw, and they were models. 
and they mixed them in with other men. And systematically, the vast majority of the women did not prefer the chiseled jaw men. And they reported them as not seeing compassion, seeing them as self-involved, etc. right? Um, and they tended to opt for others. So any of you with chiseled jaws, you gotta work on that compassion piece. <laughs> but but the, the, the important thing is, and part of why, and I just wanted to say this as part of a setup, and to show that I know what Tinder is, um, is to say that in your experience here, with this incredibly rich and diverse class, I mean, I love the mid-careers. I've taught a lot of them since I've been here. It's fantastic. You bring life experience, so much more knowledge. Um, you're about to be, shortly, you'll be invaded by the younger um, MPPs. The other students will come on campus. But you also bring more baggage, you know, more sort of assumptions, more sort of frameworks from your environments that you've been, et cetera. Do not treat your classmates like Tinder. Do not swipe, nope, like, right? Because we are not, in fact, just what you see in an image. And in just when I asked you to identify characteristics, right? So just think, I mean, our, it's, it's, so Tinder is in effect the same thing as the first impression. And so the first thing that I would encourage all of you to do is to understand that you are not the sum total of anybody's first impression of you and that neither is anybody else and to find the ways to go beyond that, okay? That's, that is the way that you will be able to learn with each other and also from each other.